What's going on guys, Andrew Pillock Hockey here back with another video and today we're going to be discussing the Mitch Marner contract. Now this is something that, as expected, is blowing up the media once again. Mitch Marner's agent said he didn't want this to become a distraction, well guess what? It's a distraction and it's mainly your fault. That's to the agent. Um, basically, uh, I think, what's it, what's his name? Ferris? Darren Ferris or something like that? I can't remember his agent's name. Um, yeah, Darren Ferris. That's uh, that's the agent of Mitch Marner. He didn't want it to be a distraction, and it is. Uh, the reason I wanted to talk about this is the same reason that I talked about the William Nylander contract and a little bit about the Austin Matthews contract. People are losing their minds already, and people need to understand that there's a lot of aspects to this that people are not talking about because... Unfortunately, this goes for any team, but it happens more or less with Toronto. So, negative media, and I'm not saying the media is bad for this, because I'll get to that. But negative media always sort of takes over, you know, uh, good media stories. So, let's say Patrick Laine scores three goals. And then let's say Dustin Bufflin gets cross-checked from behind and, you know, he has to leave the game. You know, a lot more people are going to be talking about that cross-check from behind and, you know, swearing up and down at the player that hit him and saying, oh, Bufflin deserve it. That always happens, you know. Or let's just say Austin Matthews scores two goals. One of them sniped bar down as a beautiful goal, wins the game in overtime. Or William Nylander, like this pretty much happened, was... Him and his agent weren't agreeing with Cal Dubas, whatever. That took over. So what I'm basically trying to say is, is you know, when Mitch Marner is talking about a contract or anybody's talking about a contract, could be ranting and could be point, whatever, there's always going to be the negative media stories that come out first, like offer sheets or the, the agent not being happy. And that's what we're getting to right now. Let me just tell you once again, an offer sheet will not come into play for this contract. By that I mean the Leafs don't give a crap. If Marner decides to sign it, well then he's putting himself in a pickle as well in that dressing room. I don't care what anybody says. And I'm going to break down every little piece and I might as well just do that right now. So l let's just say Mitch Marner gets an offer sheet. And I will get into the, to the details of this as well. But I want to bring this up now because a lot of people click off of the video before I get into stuff like this. Which is fine. But let's just say Mitch Marner gets an offer sheet. First of all, he has to sign it. And if he does sign it, like I said, he will be in a pickle in that dressing room. Yeah, Matthew's contract, pretty big contract. Still not an offer sheet number. William Nylander, to be honest with you, isn't looking too bad right now for what some of the other players in the NHL that probably are around the same skill level are asking for. And for all you people that think that this is the ceiling for William Nylander, you're ridiculous. Please study the game more. You're ridiculous. I'm going to say it again. You're ridiculous. William Nylander is going to be much better, and he has looked better. I mean, what else has the guy got to do? He's been playing great lately, putting up points. Um, Mitch Marner is going to cause some chaos in that dressing room because that means guys like Kapanen, guys like Janssen. There's going to have to be other guys traded. If it gets crazy enough, kadri has got a pretty sick deal, but that's another $4 million. The Leafs are going to have to get rid of contracts. This is taking away from a good team. Um, he doesn't want to do that. Let's say Mitch Marner declines the contract and says, but look at what other teams are willing to pay me. You know what Kyle Dubas is going to say? Well, then you should have signed it then because this is the money we have for you. This is a lot of money. And if you don't take it, well, then you better sign that offer sheet because we, we ain't giving you this. We'll take our fir four first round picks and trade for another superstar. People keep forgetting that. They're like, oh, he's Mitch Marner's going to sign an offer sheet. The Leafs can't match it, even though Dubas said he will match it, by the way. Oh, they can't match it. Well, four first-round picks. Do so you think the Leafs are just going to sit there and draft four young guys? They could. Or they could trade four damn first-round picks, or at least two or three of them, and get another damn superstar. Or two. Or three. It, like, this isn't rocket science, guys. Mitch Marner is a Toronto guy. He wants to stay in Toronto. He said it before. And, like, I, I don't see the huge issue with the offer sheet. I don't think that this is a, a big deal. Um, the, the Matthews contract got done. They signed Tavares. Nylander, Matthews, Tavares, they're all locked up. They got Muzzin. He's going to be there next season. Mitch Marner's going to get a contract. And guess what? People are like, well, you're going to have to lose Kappen and Janssen. Gardner's walking. And then you're going to have to trade Kadri. No. No, guys. 
the bad contracts will be gone. They will be... Dubis will do what he needs to do. You guys think he's just going to turn around and trade his best players, his role players? No. He's going to see where Marlowe's head is at. Probably not going to retire. Probably not going to want to be traded. So Marlowe might be off the table. Nikita Zaitsev actually apparently has some value from other teams. You get rid of him, that's another $4 million. Jake Gardner, probably going to walk. Hainsey, probably going to walk. Connor Brown, $2 million for a third or fourth line guy. You're probably getting rid of him. I mean, that's six million bucks plus Nathan Horton on the LTIR. The Leafs are going to be fine. They will have the money to do it. So let's get those narratives out of the way, okay? Let's look at the why I'm talking about this again. Again, like I said, Darren Fares, Mitch Marner's agent, said that he didn't want this to be a distraction mid-season or in-season. They want to sign this contract at the end of the year. Well, they're going to do that, but the distraction has already started, and they've already asked Mitch Marner about this stuff. So basically, after Matthew signed his big $58 million deal or whatever the contract was, $58.17 million with the 11634 um, million dollar AAV per season, which is going to be what the second highest AAV in the NHL next year. Um, people are like, well, Mitch Marner is going to want to get pretty close to that. Well, let's look at some numbers. So Matthews has played 182 games. Mitch Marner's played 211. Matthews has been injured. Goals, we know Matthews has much more with 97 to 61. And when it comes to assists, Marner has much more 81 for Matthews, 132 for Marner. So um, the assist per game numbers, Marner looks better. Goals per game, Matthews looks better. But when it comes to points per game, it's actually closer than you think. Matthews has a .98, Marner has a .91. So there's an argument right there. But let me also say that you usually pay an extra premium for a centerman in the NHL over a winger. It sounds ridiculous, but it's true. Let's also add that both of them are good two-way forwards, so that kind of cancels itself out uh, in a way. But uh, I think that it's not going to be there. I think that they're going to look towards the Kucherov contract, which was around $9.5 million AAV. I think that's where it should be. If it gets to $10 million, Dubis kind of loses, but considering the ask might be over $11 million, people are discussing the fact that Marner may take a three-year bridge deal or a five-year deal. Well, the five-year deal should be off the table. I don't think the Leafs should do that. Uh, if I'm the Leafs, I am going for seven years with Marner uh, at 9.5, 9.7-ish. I think that an eight-year deal at there would be unreal. I think that'd be a great contract. You don't want the Marner, Nylander, uh, and Matthews deals coming up all at the same time again uh, because that's just going to cost you an arm and a leg. It's not going to make sense. You want to have years to be able to figure that out. Because they'll get rid of guys. The, the salary cap's going up too, guys. I, like, Adam Wilde said it. The, the, the salary cap could get up to $100 million in the next five years. So, the, the Leafs are going to be fine long term. And that, that's a funny thing too. Like, after Marlowe's contract's gone, the Leafs are going to have another $6 million to work with. The cap's probably going to go up another $4 million, $3 million. Like, the Leafs are going to be fine. Every every team that's in a crunch right now might actually be fine in a couple of years because of how much the salary cap is going to go up and, you know, players leaving and stuff. And that's another thing that people seem to forget is like Point, Ranton, and all these other guys. Hell, Kapanen might even get an offer sheet. Like, I, I want to get off the offer sheet thing, but other teams have good RFAs too that are in cap crunches. Like, take a look at Tampa Bay and Winnipeg. They're not really in smooth sailings when it comes to their cap right now. Um... So again, back to the, the distraction thing. Basically on TSN 1050, uh, they were talking about comments that were made in the summer about how like the, the Leafs were undervaluing Marner because he shouldn't take a pay cut. Nylander didn't. Matthews didn't. Well, here's the thing. Marner is not going to get underpaid. He's probably going to get overpaid. And I'm not saying that because I love, I love Mitch Marner. But the fact of the matter is, is the Leafs are probably going to pay overpay him just a little bit. The signing bonuses will be huge. Uh, I don't think that this, again, is such a big deal. People are making such a huge deal over this. Uh, I wanted to give my thoughts because I don't actually believe it's going to be that bad. I mean, even Ferris had just said, too, that before uh, they had agreed not to talk again until after the season, apparently they were coming close to an agreement anywhere between three to seven or eight years have been discussed so we'll have to see what happens I actually think a three-year deal might come into play I think the Leafs are going to give Kapanen and Janssen three-year deals as well as a prove me kind of contract maybe even two-year deals 
Um, so th this is going to get really interesting. I mean, Mitch Marner this season in 53 games played has 65 points. He looks good. 20 goals, 45 assists. And I know this video has been kind of scattered, but I really don't believe that this is going to be such a big deal. Uh you know, leaning towards the end of the season. I know Marner's just going to probably have 100 points and just look unreal over 100 points uh, the way he's been playing. Um, if he just keeps this up, him and Tavares and basically anybody he plays with. I mean, he's made sweet passes to Hyman, Brown, whoever's playing with him. Uh, I, I really do think it's going to be a $9.5 million to $9.7 million AAV, which a lot of people might think is uh, really expensive. But uh, I just think it's going to get done at that cap hit, and I hope it's long term. If it's a shorter deal, then the cap hit's probably going to go down even lower. You might see somewhere in the 8.8 .8 to $9 million range, uh, which actually is quite a lot because of the cap situation. So we'll have to see what happens. Those are just my thoughts. If you make sure to subscribe, I'd love to have more hockey conversations with you. Join the squad. Let's get to 5,000 subscribers. Thank you all so much for supporting the channel. I'm gassed. I'm really tired, and that's why I'm in this location right now. I didn't have time to set everything up because I still need to eat, and then I need to go to bed because I work again in the morning. So thank you for watching. Make sure to click that notification bell and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video or stream. Peace.